To use tiles, you will start with a process that's similar to adding a background image for a room. In our case, I've already added in the tile background. So if I go to my background file uh, folder inside the project, you'll see here's our, our main background image. But there's another one in here called back tiles. Now look very carefully at how this is set up. I've loaded a background just as I always do, gone into the uh, folder where the background tiles are located, and uh, unlike what I did with the regular background image, let me bring these both open, I made a few changes to the image I'm going to use as a tile. The main difference is are I selected this box saying that it's going to be used as a tile set. And I've also set the size of each of the tiles that I'm going to place to be 40 by 40, which happens to match everything else in our maze game. And it, it uh, matches to the original image, our original tile image. It, it breaks up that original image into 40 by 40 uh, sections, which, as you can see, include all of the different pieces that we would want to use for our walls in our maze. So this has already been set up for you. Now let's come back to our room, open it up, and uh, I want you to delete all of these black uh, wall boxes. We're going to uh, get rid of them for now, although we're actually going to bring them back later, but so that we can see what's going on. Just go through and delete them. Remembering it's the right mouse button will delete, and if you hold down the shift key as you drag along, uh, then you will uh, be able to delete them continuously. Before I get rid of these other pieces, um, I want to demonstrate how it works to place in some back tiles. So I'm going to click on uh, my tile tab, it will bring this up, and then I simply click on whichever one I want to place out into my scene. So let's say I'm going to choose this corner one, and then I just click and it goes into place. And beneath that one I'm going to need just a series of regular old straight tiles. I need the same thing over here. And I'm going to need a top corner, and a bottom corner over here, and another bottom corner over here, and then I'm going to need the horizontal tiles coming along like this. Okay, this takes some time, so I'm not going to do it in the video here, but you can follow the same procedure. Uh, go through, get rid of your wall tiles. I'm sorry, your wall objects, and then go to your tiles tab, and then start drawing out your maze. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm just going to follow the same maze that already exists. If you want in your own uh, version of this, I, I encourage you to create a different version of your maze that will start you on the road to your assignment, which is to create three different levels of mazes, an easy, a medium, and a hard level. So I'll be back in a minute after I've placed all of my tiles, and we'll continue from there. All right, I've got all of my tiles placed, and I can't pretend that it is particularly fast to get those done. Uh, if you're anything like me, you'll find that it takes a little getting used to finding the right one of the tiles in our tile set, uh, and then uh, placing them out there. Uh, takes a little a little doing, but I've got them all the way I'd like them now. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is I'm going to go back again to the objects tab select the wall object and then I can just go and start uh, placing them over those tiles that I put in. Now, you may wonder what's going to happen when we actually play the game. It seems like we're just covering up all those nice tiles that we put out there. Uh, but it's not so. We'll make it so that these wall tiles will disappear when we're actually playing the game. So I'll quickly get my tiles all covered. 
and then I'll show you how it is we can make sure that these black squares disappear. So they're, functionally they'll work, they'll still act like walls, and they'll still be the parent object to our koala objects. Um, but, come over to the Objects tab, come down to the Wall Object and select it to open up its uh, properties. And right in the middle, on the left-hand side, you'll see a, a uh, selection box for Visible. Deselect that and say OK. And But wait, we still see it here. Well, what will happen is when we play the game, uh, the one, the, any objects that we have set with the visible button turned off will not appear in the room. Let's see what that looks like now. So you can see we don't see them anymore, but they're still there, ah, acting like they're supposed to. All right, and our everything else is still working the way it's supposed to too, so we can continue on. In terms of your koala game, you pretty much have the pieces that you need to get going on assignment three. So let me introduce uh, the requirements for that assignment. Your goal for assignment number three is to design and play test your own levels of the koala game. Uh, you're going to create three original levels, one easy, one medium, and one hard. Uh, to design these levels, you can use the full, complete version of the Koala game from Chapter 7 in the textbook. It's called Koala 7, and it will be uh, on the Blackboard site. It includes some extra hazards that I did not include in the video demonstration. Or you can use the version that we did uh, in class. The version that you see in the video demonstration has uh, uh, fewer hazards in it. Create your original levels and then play test your game. You need to have six people, not five, not four, <laughs> but you need to get six people to play your game and then observe the results. Um, during the play testing, you cannot speak to the subjects while they're playing unless they ask you a question while they're uh, in the middle of a, a level. And in fact, we're hoping they're going to ask uh, you questions because that will provide some data for you about how they are enjoying the game or how difficult it is and so on. You can give directions beforehand uh, as they go in uh, to play the game so they know what it is that they're supposed to do since we didn't build instructions into our game. Once they're done playing the game, um, I would ask that you um, sort of survey your subjects, the people who played the game, asking them about the levels, what they liked, what they didn't like, uh, what was difficult, uh, what was not difficult, what was fun, what was not fun, and so on, and record uh, all of the responses that you get. So just reinforcing that same information. Uh, Part of the requirement of the assignment is to tabulate the results that you get. And here is the specific information that we'll be uh, grading for the assignment. You need to include demographic information, age, gender, and also ask about how much experience they have uh, playing computer games. Uh, record the number of tries they do per level uh, before they complete the level or if they give up on the level, uh, record that information as well. Uh, speaking of that, you'll want to be careful in your design. Uh, hopefully the players will be able, all of the players will be able to reach uh, your third level. They may or may not complete it, but uh, if they don't, if they never get to the third level, record that information as well. It's valuable to know. Uh, record any questions that are asked as they play and any comments they give about each level, how fun, easy, hard, how engaging. For assignment three, you can also earn some extra credit points, up to five as usual, and here's what you need to do to earn those points. You need to make at least one level in your game a timed level, so that as the player is uh, working on a given level, they'll see a countdown clock appearing on the screen. You could just do... Uh, 
seconds. Unless your level is incredibly complex, you can keep it under a minute. As the time nears zero, as it's getting close to running out, you should design in a way to inform the player by playing a sound or changing the font color on the numbers, uh, the size of the font showing the uh, number of seconds left, and so on. The timer for the level shouldn't automatically start when the level starts. Instead, it should begin the first time the player uh, does something on the keyboard. And then if the timer runs out, then the level should restart. So that's how you can earn some extra credit. When you have completed the uh, designing and building of your game, and you've playtested it, and you've recorded the information, then you can submit your assignment. Uh, please uh, be careful to pay attention to the due date that's listed on the Blackboard site. It's the official due date. Don't be late. Uh, the files that you should submit for this assignment are both the GMK, the game file from GameMaker, and also the published uh, executable file for the game. Uh, your game should include uh, a, the start room that's already built in, the end room that's already built in, plus your three levels. Please don't include other levels in there. Um, the game that we worked on in class and the one in the book have a whole bunch of levels in there. Get rid of all of those. Uh, except for the start room and the end room. It should only have your three levels. Also, you'll include an Excel document with the tabulated data and uh, comments from the players. That's it. Have fun with this assignment. Uh, it's a good one. It's great um, in part because you're not doing a lot of uh, heavy development on this. You really get to focus in on the design of your levels, uh, how to tune them to that easy, medium, and hard, thinking about uh, sort of a casual player of your of your game, and then uh, getting to see somebody actually play a game you've created and seeing what they like and don't like is, is a great experience. So get in there and start on it and have fun.